Hello everyone, this is Jim Merkin here, and I've taken apart my DV9700 laptop. Um, it's actually a 9500 that I converted to a 97 because I bought a 9700 board, and that essentially just means that I have 512 of video RAM instead of 256 from the original configuration. So this is essentially the motherboard that you have in your uh, DV series laptops. And the main problem is this configuration here with the GPU, Northbridge and the CPU which is right here. They're, all three of them are together to the point where I put it like this, my thumb and my index finger, I can touch all three components with my hand which is uh, pretty bad in terms of heat because of the fact that they did not do a good job cooling it. With this very small fan that gets dust stuck in here and uh, the GPU doesn't have a cooling unit. So uh, my fix was to use a copper penny on the north bridge and copper shims which just happened to find uh, thrown out uh, from a old CPU uh, fan set um, a bunch of copper shims there I just picked off a few of them but they come off into pieces like so and you can use them as copper shims so but anyway I'm taking off the heat sink configuration now I didn't show you how I actually took this apart because um, there's a lot of videos um, talking about this problem and a lot of experts on YouTube who've already taken apart this laptop several different ways so you can look at their videos uh, and my video would just be specific to my configuration or, or mod that I did so this is the CPU Northbridge configuration and I put a copper shim here and I have a copper penny which actually didn't come off into that it's just right there now the penny has to be from 19, before 1982. So mine there says uh, 1962. Essentially 1960s, uh, 1970s, the pennies were 95% copper. So they work very well. And the reason I'm using a penny instead of a shim is because of this offset. But you can see that offset between the processor and the north bridge there. And HP did a poor job designing for that offset because the offset here is very subtle um, compared to this one which is a lot more uh, significant so uh, using that copper penny there you get a better thermal contact copper is a very very good thermal conductor so it's my choice of uh, material to use so I've done the cleaning and you can see the three die there are very shiny they're very clean um, I use a uh, alcohol solution 91 percent I also want to show you I've shown you some pictures but kind of want to show you the in the video how um, shiny this thing should be so I, I I make sure to clean these things very well um, and they very make them very sh as shiny as possible because this is your GPU heatsink which again has no fan connection to it and your CPU Northbridge heatsink which has the fan connected but um, there is no copper uh, connection to that Northbridge therefore we use the copper penny 1962 um, and the, this penny is not the best thing to use because you see all this surface roughness there that uh, doesn't allow for good contact to the base of the copper um, but being um, I'm trying to be as conservative as, as possible. Uh, I'm using this and it actually has done a great job for me already. Um, make sure to clean this thing very well when you find your penny because most likely it's going to have a lot of black crud on it. But after multiple uses you'll start to see it get very shiny. So the difference between a, a uh, pre-1980 copper penny and a post-1980 copper penny is if you actually look closely you can tell that this is a different type of material that's used. Essentially uh, this is mostly copper and this is mostly zinc. Also you want to make sure that you have your copper shims here. Approximately three of these here is about the thickness of a penny. So I think a penny is 1.5 millimeters. So 0.5 millimeters I'm assuming the thickness of this here but can't be too certain. Uh, either which way you put it I always highly recommend that if people ever have old computers, they strip them for the materials inside because older computers 
The reason why older computers lasted longer is because of this. They actually cared about the lifetime of their product. Nowadays, it's about disposable computers. Um, this is kind of be a little a short rant, uh, but um, so you know they use thermal pads. They use very inefficient things. And if you notice here, actually, on th these are the thermal pads I'm talking about. They were using the, this thing uh, on top of the Northbridge here, uh, and the Northbridge gets as hot as the CPU, um, not as hot as the GPU but it gets really hot. So you have to be aware of the fact that um, the materials that they're putting inside these computers these days make it last for only a year and a half, just past the warranty period. All right, guys. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you how much uh, thermal paste I've applied here. I just put a little bit in the center, uh, just a drop essentially in the center. And then I apply my copper shim, usually the uh, shiny side Again, my shims here have a rough and shiny side, so the rough side isn't going to be that great of a thermal conductor, but it, it does the job for me. I recommend that if you if you can buy uh, copper shims, that you get them with uh, shiny sides like this. Uh, so if you want, just apply it like so. And that's pretty much it. Now something I always do is I always apply the, uh, excuse me, I always clean these uh, with 91% alcohol beforehand because it allows for better contact because you don't have any grime or dust on it. So uh, for the same process I, I did with the shim there, I just apply the penny. What I try to do is I use the back side of the penny because it has a flatter surface area so it will be more in contact with the die and I use the um, long side here to kind of match up with the die so length. So if you'll see here, just put it down and I kind of move it slightly just to kind of get it set in place. And that's pretty much it for that one too. Okay. Once that's in place and set, now the thing is that if you're worrying if you're not applying too much pressure, the when the heat sinks go on top of these things, uh, these things here, they'll apply their own pressure. So um, technically, um, it'll be pretty uniform anyway. These things should be able to move still, but not too much because of that thermal paste will kind of keep it set. You know, I got some uh, a little line there. I like to make sure that none of the uh, paste comes up, you can kind of see that line a little bit there at the bottom. I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit. All right, just wipe it off with some paper. Make sure it stays in the die. So I'm just gonna add this copper shim here. Okay, so I applied a, another copper shim here because I realized that I was getting high fan. Um, the fan was accelerating and wasn't getting enough cooling out of the unit. And this is the un this is the setup I had before: a copper shim, copper penny, another copper shim, and this provided the best um, setup for cooling. So I'm going to use this again, and I'm going to give you the results afterwards. So I applied my uh, thermal paste and now to put the rest of the unit back together. And you have your penny there, you have a shim under here, and you have a shim under here. Don't forget to connect this back to its port there. Something else I did from a mod I saw on the internet was open up this vent a little bit more. Uh, since it's actually covered up significantly to give it uh, more airflow there and to take off the stickers that are in the back of these things here and give it more airflow as well as the back of this one so you can see through it very well but before it was very clouded and covered up with uh, some sticker mesh hello all so after the modification you can actually here a lower fan speed 
and if I can show you the temperatures it's around 30s all across the board um, this is actually lower than what I am used to seeing but I just turned this computer on but the thing that makes it even better is the fact that my GPU is at 51 which is amazing. I'm going to play a few games and see where it goes. Right. I'm actually running um, XP on this laptop. I found it to be the best combination of uh, speed as well as uh, just being optimized. I think XP is uh, a great place for this laptop since it's from 2007. Uh, Windows 7 would work as well, but I don't have a license for that, so. Uh, moving on, so we have the Obsidian title, Fallout New Vegas. Actually, I'm going to load a game. I'll start from here. I think I have a few people I can actually shoot up from here. You can kind of hear the fan is on. Most cases, it's pretty quiet. I think there's a guy over here trying to kill me. Oh no, there isn't. But I'm gonna shoot this guy. Oh well, I ran out of bullets. That's why. You want to see his head blow away? Let's do that. Isn't that beautiful? That was beautiful, wasn't it? And you can hear everything because all the audio. Um, I'm all slow. I need some alcohol. But yeah, that was that's pretty much it. I'm gonna quit out of this. So the fan's kind of loud right now. Um, let's see what the temperatures are at. So the temperatures range. I don't know if you can kind of see that. Zoom in maybe. Temperatures range from 70, uh, maxes of 70 to 72 to 78. That's when playing games though. But on idle, you hear it? It's going back down. Look at the temperatures on the left there. That's what it's actually at right now. And it seems like it's, get it to focus. It needs to be on super macro. Super macro coming up. Oh, there it goes. There we go. The fan actually turned off. And you can kind of see these temperatures here. Uh, 51 degrees, 50 degrees, uh, 37 for the hard drive, and about 62, 63 degrees. So they're pretty high because I was just playing the game. But when I come off the game, it starts to calm down. It goes back to its regular self. And uh, I'm back to enjoying my laptop. Either which way you put it, <clears throat> I think um, this mod is definitely worth doing. It's a little bit risky if you don't know what you're doing. Um, I'll admit that much, but it's definitely worth it. This is Jamerican signing out.